Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name is Justin Greenwald. Today I'm doing my review of the Elisa Strike Amp 8. This is a smaller, cheaper version of the Elisa Strike Amp 12, which Elisa released a few months ago, or maybe it's been a year. I'm not sure how long it's been. But this one sells for about $220. That one sells for about $350. And I know there's a lot of people on Sam Ash or Sweetwater, whatever website, taking a look at both these amps, wondering if it's really worth spending 350 bucks on the more expensive version, or should you buy this cheaper version, the Elisa Strike Amp 8 that just came out? That's what I'm gonna to try to answer in today's video with this review. By the way, Elisa did send me both of these, but they're not compensating me for this review. It's gonna be my honest opinions about this. All right, so here's what you need to know about this starting off with the overall build and what comes in the box. All that really comes in the box is the manual, the speaker cable, and the speaker itself. It doesn't feel overly heavy, it doesn't feel overly light, and I'm not gonna worry if this you know, tips over. I feel like it's solidly made for the price range that it's in. And there's a handful of ways that you can mount this. There are feet on the bottom, so it's meant to be stood up like this, or as far as like advertising photos, you can see that it's meant to be laid down sideways because that's where the logo is facing. And then finally, there's a pole mount on the bottom of this, and it's a universal mount, so you can put it on any kind of pole that you want. Elesis also helpfully has a little, a little screw knob here on the bottom, so you can make sure that it doesn't keep rotating on the speaker stand and it stays in place. Believe it or not, that's something that not every speaker has. I'm glad to see that. I gotta say, the back of the speaker is incredibly simple. All you have are two combo ports as your inputs. You can use XLR or quarter inch cables with either of these ports. So yeah, that's basically it. There are volume knobs for adjusting how loud you want it to be. There's a contour button, which is like a simple like EQ switch. There's also a ground lift button, which is nice because you see that on direct boxes. This allows you to cut out some of the hum that sometimes you'll accidentally run into with power issues. And if that doesn't fix it, just try plugging your speaker into some other outlet. Back when I worked at a theater, we had a separate circuit just for the speakers. We called it speaker power. Anyway, in addition to that, you also have an output which is for an XLR cable. You might be wondering what that is for. Essentially, you can chain two of these speakers together, or you could just have it as an output for a recorder. Not everybody has enough outputs on their drum module to record and listen to themselves play. So if you have a simpler drum module, you could plug your recorder straight into this output. I do that a lot whenever I film weddings. And then finally, there's a power switch at the bottom of the speaker right here, and then you have the power cable. I wish the power cable was a tad longer. Just keep in mind that you'll probably have to get an extension cord if your speaker is any distance at all away from a wall. You're gonna have to get an extension cable for this speaker. Now, of course, this is called the Elisa Strike Amp 8. If you're wondering what the 8 stands for, that refers to the size of the speaker on the inside. So if you remove the grill and you measure it, it's about eight inches across. But if you kind of just measure the speaker part and not just the plastic bracket that goes around it, it's more like, seven and a quarter inches across. The reason why you can't see right through the speaker grill is because they also have a piece of foam right here to give it a matte black appearance or maybe it's for dust resistance. Okay, so let's talk about the more important stuff. How loud does it get? How does it sound? Does it have a lot of bass? So as far as overall volume goes, these things get pretty loud. I tested it just with one and then also with a two speaker configuration. And in both cases, I got it loud enough to suit my needs. If you're in a living room sized room or if you're in a bedroom sized room or a basement sized room like where I am right now, it will do the job. I wouldn't really recommend these for a really loud stage environment. You might need a little bit more power in that situation. But for people just practicing, this will get plenty loud enough. But of course, some of you just care about bass. Well, if that is the case, then these are not the speakers for you. I would recommend the Elisa Strike Amp 12s paired maybe with a subwoofer because these are fine with the mids and the highs and some of the, the lower mids and even some of the beginnings of the lower end frequency. But as you go farther and farther down that frequency range, this doesn't deliver. A speaker at this price range and this size can't compare to like a three or $400 speaker. For some context, here is a Simmons DA2012V and this is similar to the Elisa Strike Amp 12 for context. This is how big this speaker is. That's what you get when you spend more money. So here are the overall pros and cons of buying this speaker system. On the plus side, it is very, very inexpensive. If your budget only reaches to $220, these speakers are an excellent choice. They get fairly loud. They have combo ports, so they'll work with XLR or quarter inch cables. I like the fact that there's a ground lift switch on them and they're pretty portable. All those things are great. Now, as far as downsides go, there are two things that come to mind. The first is that there's no Bluetooth with these speakers. That's something that the competition is starting to add, 
and that would have been something that would have swayed me a little bit more towards these speakers. They're still excellent, but that's just one little feature that you're not gonna get at this price range. That's kind of just a want to have, but the one thing that these truly are missing are EQ controls. In case that your, your drum module doesn't have it, or if you're just plugging in your cell phone, you wanna be able to EQ the music coming out of the speaker. That would have been nice. But of course, that's one sacrifice you're gonna make if you only spend $200 on a drum amp. The really, really good stuff starts at around $320 and goes up from there. But if all you need is a practice amp for 200 bucks, this definitely will fit that role. And especially for the smaller rooms, you don't need to you know, shake the entire house anyway. I had fun while using these speakers, and I think they'll fit the job for most people that don't want to spend a lot of money. Does the speaker system deliver for the price range that it's in? I would have to say yes. You can find better value for your money if you could buy like an old beat up speaker from Facebook Marketplace or something. But as far as the new market, at 200 bucks, this is not a bad option when you want to amplify your electronic drum. Especially for people that mostly practice with their headphones and they only need a drum amp every once in a while, this is definitely a good option. And of course, the more money you spend, the better the speaker that you'll get, but that's true in pretty much everything. Hope that helped out. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you wanna purchase this amp or several others in different price ranges, I've linked out a few down in the description below. Go check those out. There are links to Amazon that help support the channel at no cost to you. Big thank you to the people on Patreon who helped to make this video possible. You're the real MVPs. See you guys in a few.